Welcome to D-Lab. We're going to work on that Johnson Viking 1 that came in a few months ago with damage. I have it transmitting, but the modulation section is in op because it's missing pieces and somebody's been in there doing stuff, right? So I need to get in there and correct that. This transmitter currently has low power output. However, the modulation section and the modulation bias resistor are not correct. So that may be part of the problem. So I'm going to fix that. I'm going to fix the modulation section and see if everything comes back to life. Well, first off, in the original video, just to get this thing to transmit, I subbed in this 10K resistor because the original modulation bias adjust resistor is open. I now have a new replacement. So I'm going to get that in there. Then you come down into this area, and this is a big old mess. Somebody got here and modified it. There's sockets here that don't belong. Got some loose wiring. And the worst part is it's missing the interstage transformer. Well, I've got one. So I'm pretty much going to gut all this out and put it back to stock, and we'll retest. All right. So as I've said in the past, when you're in this type of situation where something's been highly modified and does not even resemble the print, the best thing to do is just carve it out because it's all wrong anyway. Just get it out of your way. Get the clutter out, clean it up, and start over. So in case you're wondering, yes, the modulation transformer itself is fine. You can see I'm at the center tap there, and up above, there's a plate of one of the 807s. And there is the other. So we pretty much have equal resistance, so it's worth fixing it. Well, there's the pile removed from the modulation input section. Now we still have these two 9-pin jacks, which were not stock either. They used to be a 7-pin for the 6AU 6-tubes. Luckily, I have some 3 quarter inch 7-pin style sockets that will drop right back into these holes. So we can get it right back where she should be. Alright, the old 9-pin sockets are out. You can kind of see the witness mark of where the old originals used to sit. Luckily, I've got these nice three-quarter inch mount sockets. To show you how they go in around my camera. I purchased these through surplus sales in Nebraska years ago. I believe they're old cinch. They're the real McCoy. Let's get them in. All right, I got the new seven pin sockets installed and I've cleaned up the audio area. So I'm going to get wiring on that. I also changed out the 20K modulation bias resistor. Here's the old one, and I didn't realize, but it was actually a 50K in the place of a 20. But either way, it's open, so it's junk. All right, let's get to work on that audio section. Well, there's the audio input section rewired for the 6AU6s like it was stock. Now it's time to get that interstage transformer installed. We're getting close to firing it up. All right, so that was quite the job, but the audio section is rewired. There's the interstage transformer. Of course, I already showed you the tube wiring. If you look here, you can see I made a temporary connection just to inject some audio because I'm gonna be changing out that front jack. So I'm not gonna make that permanent. And I also added the 100 ohm resistors going to the grids of the 807s that in this design, they didn't use, but in the Viking 2 they added it, so I put it in. All right, so here's the initial test after the modulation section repair. So I'm hoping for good things, because that 20K resistor was actually the wrong value, it was 50K. So I'm thinking that that was affecting the screen voltage going to the output tube. And of course we know the modulation was dead because everything was missing, right? So I would not recommend testing a transmitter like this because this thing's wide open, so it's probably going to spew RFO over in the shop. But I have to do it at this point because the cabinet was damaged, and I need to be able to get to that modulation slide adjust resistor underneath if the mod current's wrong, right? So I'm going to cut to a close-up 
so you guys can see the metering and we'll see where we're at. I've got the Viking 1 into this dummy load watt meter combo. In the past I was only able to get about 60 watts out of her. All right. So we're warmed up. There's my grid. All kinds of grid. So that's a good sign. All right. Go to plate. I'm in CW mode right now. I'm getting over 100 watts of power. I'm at 200 milliamps. It's looking good. All right. So now we're in phone. I'm going to go over modulation. And what I'm looking for at this point is just modulator current. It can be high. It can be low. I don't care. I just want to see it. So here we go. All right. We got it. Got approximately 40 mils. But let me see what my plate is. A little bad spot in that, but there's about 230 mils. There's my grid. Oh, this is my uh, meter switch messing with me. See there? It's actually higher. Let me clean that. So I just hit the switch with a little bit of deox. Let's see now what our current is. Look at there. Yeah, it's still a little flaky, but. It's intolerance, okay? Could be a bad connection on the back of the switch. I'll have to take a look at that. But I'm getting well over 100 watts, and I've got 50 to 70 milliamps of modulation current. It's exactly what you're supposed to have. So I'm going to flip this thing down, and I'll inject some audio into the mic jack and see if this thing will actually modulate. All right, so i got the Viking 1 sitting the way it should. For audio input, I'm using my leader audio generator. I'm just going to pump in about a 500 hertz tone. I want to see if this meter moves and I want to see if we see more wattage output, right? So it's going to idle at about 100 watts and you should see that forward modulate, right? So here we go. Get in here so maybe you can see the metering a little bit better. Here we go, people. Wish me luck. So there's our 100 watts. Oh yeah. You can hear that tone coming out of the transformers. Listen to this. Craziness. It's working. This Viking 1 is about ready for a full on the air test. Oh, so how cool is that? This thing showed up looking like it came out of a trash compactor and now it's operational. We're getting really close with this. I'm super happy that the modulation section came alive the way it did. So obviously the true test is to get a microphone on it, get it on the air, and get some audio reports. But right now, I'm really happy with the results. So I talked to the owner. He wants this mic jack out. He wants the typical quarter inch type TRS jack installed with push to talk. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in, and then we'll hook a microphone up to it, see what it sounds like. For your information, if you decide that you want to change out that microphone input jack, you have to pull the face off. There is a gap between the chassis and that front plate. And if you try to take this jack and put it in there and cram that nut down, you'll buckle the front panel. So yep, I have to remove the face. So there's the new mic jack installed on the main panel, okay? You have to install it on this panel, and then you need these terminals to go through that old hole. Well, guess what? It's way too small. So what I do is I take a green leaf punch. This is an inch and an eighth punch. We're going to open up the hole on the chassis so that when the uh, front panel goes back on, There'd be plenty of clearance for those terminals because you have to reach in there and solder it, okay? I had somebody comment in my last video that, well, you show us the punch, but you didn't show us using it. Well, here we go. So I'm going to make a hole just for you guys. This aluminum cuts easily. 
If you don't have a Greenlee punch, you can probably use a gigantic stepper bit and do the same thing. Just end up with a little bit of a mess doing that, whereas this does a nice clean job. Almost there. There we go. Alright, so now when I put on the front panel, it'll easily clear the jack. But before I reinstall the panel and wire the jack, now is your primo opportunity to clean and lube this chassis, especially the roller reductor assembly. And you remember I had some flakiness with the meter switch and looking at the back of it, it's kind of tarnished. So I'm going to go ahead and deox things, clean and lube it. Then I'll put the front panel back on. All right, I got the front panel on. So let's flip it on its side and see how much clearance I have on that new mic jack. So there she is. New TRS jack installed, plenty of clearance, easy to wire. So I'm sure you're asking why put in the TRS type jack if you're just going to go into it with audio, what's the other terminal for? Yep, it's for the push to talk module. So this Viking one will get the D-Lab K1 push to talk. Now I've already showed this installation several times in Viking 2's, so I'm not going to repeat the performance. But I will cut back showing the final wiring going to the plate switch, the TRS jack, and the wiring that goes to the module. All right. K1 module is all wired up as well as the new microphone input jack. I'm going to get this thing flipped over, get the knobs back on it, we'll give it a test. Alright, so I did notice that the 807 plate resistors were missing. Somebody had wired that direct and the wiring itself was pretty frayed, so I replaced it. So now I've got a microphone hooked up to the Viking 2 so we can hear what it really sounds like. And for the test, I've got a beautiful National 173 sitting here idling, waiting for that signal. So let's test her out. Well, here we go. Let's see what this Johnson Viking 1 sounds like on the National 173. Remember, I'm just into a dummy load. The receiver has like a one foot antenna, okay? So it could pick up a little bit of noise and interference since this thing's wide open. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the audio tone. So here it is. Hello one two. Hello one two three four. Alright, yeah, she sounds good and chimey. Alright, let's take a look at our uh, forward modulation. So there's dead key, a little over 100 watts. So you can see she's got some modulation. That's about uh, 5 to 6 on the audio gain. And this is a non-amplified D104. So I'll be producing more follow-up videos on the maintenance of this Johnson Viking 1. There's still a lot of work to do. But the hope is, is that someday while you're tuning across the airwaves, you'll hear that plate modulation coming out of this transmitter. That's the gold D-Lab. We'll see.